Hello learners, my name is Ramnath Kaukar, Assistant Professor in Geography at Ganpat Parsikar College of Education. I welcome you all to this course on Introduction to Research Methodology in Geography. This will be module number 8 and in this module we are going to discuss about how to write an abstract and plagiarism. Outline for today's presentation is Meaning and Significance of Abstract Purpose of Writing an Abstract Components of an Abstract Brief Discussion on Research Ethics What is Plagiarism? Types of Plagiarism Why do we plagiarize? And how to avoid plagiarism? What is an abstract? An abstract is a condensed form or an abridged version of a report. An abstract is one of the most important sections of research paper or thesis. And even though it appears at the top of the research article or thesis, hence it is written at the end or after completion of all the sections of research report. An abstract is a summary of research report which has a word limit of about 150 to 300 words. An abstract is complete in itself. An abstract should hold the interest of the reader. So these are all features of abstract. What is the purpose of writing an abstract? An abstract is a concise summary of an academic text such as a journal article or dissertation. It serves two main purposes. To help potential readers determine the importance or relevance of your paper for their own research. To communicate your key findings to those who don't have time to read the whole paper. Abstracts are often indexed along with keywords on academic databases. So they make your work more easily findable. These are the different components of an abstract that we are going to discuss one by one in further slides and we are going to also answer the question how we are supposed to write an abstract. So let us move to the introduction section of an abstract. This is the first section that we are going to write in abstract. Introduction section includes global overview of the research topic. Study area is also significant which allows the reader to understand about the extent of the study is conducted. Following are some of the questions that you need to address while writing introductory section or part of an abstract. So these are some of the questions that you may encounter. Why have you taken up this project or what is the motivation behind it? Or why is your research significant or how is it going to create an impact? So problem statement and objective. What is the problem that the existing researchers have not been able to solve so far? So how will you going to overcome the research gap that constitutes your objective? which you need to specify in one or two lines. Why should we conduct a research to address the problem? It should also contain researcher's objective or purpose of research that he is going to conduct. In the methodology section, this will be your third section of an abstract. Researchers should mention the method which was being followed to carry out research and why the researcher has use that particular method. Give an overview of methodology. Do not explain step by step procedure or do not try to explain all the methods that are used to achieve objectives. Results and discussions. In this case, you need to include key results and discussion that help you in achieving your objective. All the other supporting results and discussions can be your part of a research paper or thesis. You need not need to include your abstract. All the important findings and major contributions should be presented concisely. And in the final section of abstract, you need to include your concluding remarks about the research text. 
Finally, the last component of your abstract is conclusion. Here, you need to share broader applications or implications of your study. How has your research study made an impact and how has it added value to the research field or the research community? Do not exaggerate too much. Do not try to stretch too much. Stick to the point and share genuine facts as how your research made an impact. Do not try to explain in detail, otherwise you will lose the credibility of your research writing. So this is just an example for you how we can write an abstract. Moving to the next part that is plagiarism. Before going to the introductory part, first let us understand what do we mean by research ethics. Research ethics refers to the set of principles and guidelines that govern the conduct of research involving human subjects or animals. Ethical considerations are essential to ensure that research is conducted responsibly with respect for the rights, well-being and privacy of individuals involved. In simple words, research ethics meaning do's and don'ts which the researcher has to take into consideration while doing a research. Plagiarism, fabrication and falsification comes under don'ts which the researcher uh, should avoid plagiarism, fabrication and falsification and as a researcher we must avoid all these uh, things. Now, let us understand what is plagiarism. Plagiarism is the representation of another's language, thoughts, ideas or expressions as one's own original work. In simple words, plagiarism is nothing but just copying the text what is readily available on internet or on books. In educational context, there are different definitions of plagiarism depending on the institution. Plagiarism is the act of using the ideas or words of others in your writing without giving due credit to the author of the text. Simply it means cheating. What constitutes plagiarism? How to avoid plagiarism? Best plagiarism correction softwares, both paid as well as open source softwares that we are going to see in further slides. So first let us understand why do we plagiarize? Why students are uh, copying the text which is already available? Why they are not writing on their own? See some of the difficulties which are being faced by the researchers because of the study pressure. Okay. So, due to the intense study pressure or due to the uh, pressure which is generated, okay, due to the time limitation, they try to plagiarize. Okay? And these are different reasons why do we plagiarize, like due to the disorganized of thought process, okay, they are not organized. English as a foreign language, they might face uh, this problem, okay, this problem is common in uh, the Indian region, okay, in India, because it is a secondary language uh, in most of the state, states of India, okay. Uh, we can take example of Goa, uh, primary or mother tongue language is Konkani, but uh, we are using official language as English, that is our secondary language. So, most of the researchers find it difficult to uh, express their views thoughts in this foreign language as such. So poor study habits, okay, they must have uh, 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 not gone through proper uh, study habits and it is because of that uh, they are facing lot of difficulties in writing uh, or expressing their thoughts in foreign language. So there is careless attitude from the student's point of view or the researcher's point of view. They are not uh, giving importance to their research uh, work. So 
a careless attitude can be seen from their uh, end and that is uh, one reason behind uh, why do the researchers plagiarize lack of academic discipline so this might be also one reason behind the plagiarization types of plagiarism there are different types of plagiarisms okay out of which uh, some of them i have listed in this particular slide that is complete plagiarism complete plagiarism is nothing but it is a type of plagiarism which occurs when a writer submits someone else work in their own name paying somebody to write a paper for you then handing handing that paper in with your name on it it is an act of complete plagiarism the next one is source based plagiarism source based plagiarism can be tricky one to understand with this kind of plagiarism the writer might cite their sources okay which he has referred correctly but present the sources in a misleading way for example let us understand with a simple example that is the writer might reference might give reference a secondary source in their work but he only gives a credit to the primary source not the secondary source from which the data uh, is being collected the third one is direct plagiarism direct plagiarism is similar to complete plagiarism the next one is self and auto plagiarism so reusing your own words or phrases or reusing your own ideas again and again in your uh, consequent research papers okay, that is nothing but self plagiarism you yourself or the researcher uh, is uh, basically using the same ideas which he has used in the past okay that is nothing but an example of self plagiarism mosaic or merge or patchwork okay so we will understand with an example okay an example of patchwork plagiarism is taking a clause from a source and merging or uh, adding it in a sentence of your own so that is an example of mosaic plagiarism where we are merging several things okay that is nothing but mosaic plagiarism accidental plagiarism accidental plagiarism is perhaps uh, the most common type of plagiarism because it happens uh, when the writer doesn't realize okay uh, the writer doesn't realize they are plagiarizing another's work it happens accidentally so therefore it is known as accidental plagiarism very uh, the researcher is not aware of uh, what he is uh, uh, being uh, where the researcher is not aware uh, of all these things penalties in case of plagiarism in academic and research publication level of similarities level 0 similarity up to 10% okay uh, minor penalties or there won't be any penalties okay see a relaxation is given by uh, the, go, the ugc okay that uh, a researcher can have a similarities or a research paper or thesis can have a similarities up to 10% but not more than 10% okay so that uh, level uh, is stacked as level 0 okay level 1 uh, will allow the researcher okay to have similarities uh, between 10 to 40% but very the researcher uh, will be asked to withdraw his or her manuscript and again he needs to uh, change few things okay and he will have to submit it again so that is level 1 level 2 similarities above 40 to 
between 40 to 60 percent. So researcher shall be asked to withdraw manuscript and the supervisor now. Okay, he will be punished. The person shall not be allowed to be supervised for PhD students for a period of two years in case of level two. In case of level three, the researcher shall be asked to withdraw manuscript and the respective supervisor shall not receive two successive annual increments. In level three, uh, it is clearly stating that the researcher here uh, is being punished with two successive annual increment. He will not get two successive annual increment. The person shall not be allowed to be a supervisor to any MPhil student or PhD student for a period of three years. So these are uh, the levels which are listed by uh, the UGC. So now question arises over here is that how to avoid plagiarism? How we can avoid plagiarism? Okay, there are three ways which we can avoid plagiarism. The first way is by quoting. Quoting is basically using information from the source article as it is simply cutting and pasting the required information under quotation mark. And also you need to cite the source. The next one, how we can avoid plagiarism is by paraphrasing. In paraphrasing, you write the entire information in your own words and also you need to cite the source. In this case, you are changing the entire sentence construction and rephrase in your own words. The third way in which we can avoid plagiarism is by summarizing. This is similar to paraphrasing only, but in this case, we are basically using lesser number of words than the source text. Basically in summarizing, you are trying to get a general idea or a gist of what other people have written. Let us understand with a simple example. For example, in the source article, the information is given in 2-3 paragraphs. But you want to summarize that information and write it probably in 2-3 lines. So that is nothing but summarizing. So in these three ways, we can avoid plagiarism. So there are few softwares okay, which are basically used to correct plagiarism. In simple terms, it can be done by comparison of submitted literature by the author with available literature on local or global level. Available literature includes printed as well as digital editions of books, book chapters, articles, blogs, newspapers, tweets, reports, etc. See, now we have to understand that which are those uh, softwares which are good in terms of plagiarism correction. The most popular and reputed paid softwares are Turnity, Authenticate, Killbird, where you can trust these softwares and uh, get your research text uh, correct. So there are few freely available softwares also which you can download and go through plagiarism checker. In this case especially you are using free softwares. So there are some restrictions with regards to word limit and some of the features you may not be available to freely use. So example plague, Qtex, plagiarism detector. See at the end you need to decide okay. See these are the three softwares which are very popular and reputed. For that you need to have a licensed version or a subscription and only then you can use all the features uh, pertaining to that particular software. So I would recommend uh, these three softwares, Turnitin, Authenticate and Killbird, which are uh, popular as well as uh, you can uh, trust on these three softwares.
but the only problem is that they are paid softwares so for that you need to have a subscription to use all the features of those softwares so these are references which i have referred for better understanding uh, you all can also refer to this thank you for watching